Uh, yeah, hey guys, uh, this is Bob, Bob Ufrick of Bob Views Droids over on 7th. Uh, listen, I've been hearing a lot about, uh, my name getting dragged through the mud, a little bit about people talking about, uh, you know, maybe we do some black market work. Uh, tell you what guys, I don't know what kind of business you do. I don't know why you might be talking about me, but I assure you we are on the up and up. I'd hate to try to drag your lovely business name through the mud. I'm sure you understand what I'm talking about. Uh, at least would appreciate the chance to defend myself if you can't just stop talking about me. All right? All right. Call me. Hello, and welcome back. To Star Wars Minute. It's the daily podcast where we analyze, scrutinize, and celebrate the Star Wars movies one minute at a time. I'm Pete the Retailer from PeteTheRetailer.com. My name is Alex Robinson from AlexRobinson.fun. My name is Jordan D. White from the podcast Nature Trail to Hell. Yes, we were just talking about that. Welcome back, Jordan, and everybody should check out Nature Trail to Hell. They've gone beyond the Friday the 13th franchise into other uh classic slasher is that, is that classic slash well, we, we did slasher. texas chainsaw texas and then chainsaw we're actually massacre. in the process of recording a purge season of the purge Purge. oh not, not so much purge. classic and not so much slasher as far as i recall but but still horror, a lot of fun. Yeah, right horror franchise podcast nature trail to hell and if you get the, the reference to the name that's good you yeah. should yeah um, but today we're here, we're not talking about the Friday the 13th, we're talking about Minute 52 of uh, Star Wars Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, 52 starts with Babu Frick performing some kind of post- post-mortem brain surgery on C-3PO, and it ends with uh, Poe Dameron saying, I can't walk out on this war, not until it's blank. Not until it's blank. So as uh, listeners may know, every once in a while we like to do, a, if, it, if a minute ends on a cliffhanger like that, we like to do a little match game thing. So everybody get your, get your pens or you have, you have some time. We're going to reveal it for tomorrow. Write down what you think Poe is saying. Can't walk out on this war, not until it's blank. So we'll uh, tune in tomorrow to find out what we all wrote down and whether or not we matched. Um... But it uh, it's an interesting moment. We get the the culmination of the uh, you know C three PO shutdown. Babu Frick's yeah. working his magic, and we get a little uh, we get a little Poe and Zori Bliss exposition I, character moment thing. I think so this is Poe and Zori. This is one of the mm, longest conversations in the in the movie. I feel mm. like this takes for, up almost a whole minute. Yeah, forty seven seconds. But uh, mm. anyway, what were you going to say, Jordan? <laughs> Is it, does it have a lot of short scenes? Um, yeah. Like, well, the, the Poe plot on uh, this planet is, I remember being kind of controversial because people were kind of like, you made him a drug runner? Which technically they don't say. They say Spice. Right. Um, well, Han Solo uh, was do, a drug runner. Hmm. Spice. Yeah, but Poe. <laughs> spice. Poe seemed like he was just heroic. Like he just, he mm-hmm. didn't see, he, I mean, he was a little cocky and stuff, but he wasn't. I don't know. He wasn't a scoundrel. He was not uh, that kind of character. Um, mm, it's true. That said, uh, yeah. that said, anything could work if you do a good story with it. And uh, again, I, I haven't read the novel that explores it, but I'm sure it's fun. Uh, like I'd be interested in reading it. I just haven't gotten mm. around to it. Um, I just remember again. I just remember that being a big shock because he'd always been portrayed like just straight up. He's just a heroic dude. He was in the um, I forget what it was called the the New Republic. N- fleet and then he right. left to join the resistance and that oh, yeah, was about he was like it. second generation like right his his parents are rebels yep and then he kind of grew up in it and then but i guess had like a little uh you know teenage rebellion he's gonna go you know hang out and do drugs for a little bit and <laughs> then uh then come back you know and re- kind of reaffirm his his commitment. is it confirmed that spice is a drug no i don't know we all just well we all based just on their okay. it, it's it's more from the context because Finn seems very uh, like condemning Judgy. about it. So mm-hmm. if whatever it is, it's not something that is, is a reputable occupation. So because this is like, like that's what they mine in the mines, right? So mm-hmm. they're mining drugs. <laughs> well, not in the 
and, and the part that we saw, right? That, that was just, oh no, right. That, that was, yeah. they were mining drugs. They were storing they were, coaxium. They in were also mind. using the, 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 the parts that were mined out, they're using that as cold storage, right? They're renting yeah. those out as cold storage. The way that- <laughs> that, that's even more unsensible. What? <laughs> Well, it's like the you know, like a lot of the the you know, like film and 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 music archives that the that the major corporations have are in like salt mines in the middle of nowhere because I didn't know that. because it's it's you know kind of cold and dry. So, fair enough. It's um, funny you bring this up because this scene reminds me. Zori Bliss is basically what Han Solo was in that movie. She he's like she's like I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna go. You know, go mm-hmm. to a different place and find my fortune. I got this little magic uh, pendant here that'll get you anywhere. Yeah, she just has, she just has far less room for an arc than Han. Had. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she's, she's got to like, turn on a dime. Like, Poe starts to say something. It's like, hold on, hold on. I, I got to get this all out, and I'm only on screen for like seven minutes here. So. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I definitely. This whole subsection here feels like a something that you would have seen concept art for but oh they did they didn't they had you know got cut out of the movie or whatever there was a whole subplot with yeah yeah it doesn't yeah so um um, i guess they just need it though because they need to get the little identity i mean they could you know she could they could have just been like all right use you know because we've established that they're in involved in the underworld so she could have just been like okay here use it like as they're Leaving, she can oh, be like, here, yeah. use this transponder or use here's right. an imperial code that we just got. You know, it doesn't have to be like, I'm, I'm saving up to get out of here and I bought this magic disc. <laughs> I, I bought mean, these magic is... beans. I traded my cow for this, for these, for this magic disc. That's, <laughs> I, I, yeah, so I mean, because, and then, like I said, she's got to turn on a dime to, to, to being on the good side. And it's, I, I, I guess, I, what is it? Is it supposed to be that Poe is that charming? I mean, he is really charming. Yeah. Well, um, she's like a hundred percent obsessed, infatuated with him. That's that's what I get. That she's like so. You know. Well, we should save this. This is for oh, later yeah, yeah. in the week. Yeah, yeah. Today. This is this. Yeah, she, yeah. She's still talking about K- Kajimi right. and and all that stuff. So. Well, but but she does. So it, it does come up here though. She does bring it up, but yeah. And then she was like talking about, and then like you can hear it in her voice when she's like, "You want to come with me?" Like that because when it started out and she was angry. And ready to kind of, you know, not kill them, but she was, you know, attacking them. Yeah. And then Very aggro. it switches from the, her being like, yeah, saved enough. I'm, I'm, I'm getting out of here. You, you want to come with me? Like, it, totally. You hear it in her voice that it's just like, oh, that's because she's a, like infatuated with him and could be part of why he left. Yeah. I assume <laughs> there was some like, like, personal relationship between the two of them. Like they were yeah. lovers or something like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, just based on the way they interact. And right. I'm going to chalk it up to her being so uh, desperately hoping that he'll come with her uh, because it's it's such a crazy question that I feel like anyone who knows him at all would be like, no, of course not. Like, of course not. He, You well, want him to just give up the war in the middle and go, like, settle down somewhere? Like, that's definitely not happening. Although that would be that's... a curveball in the movie. <laughs> he just right. disappeared and he never returned. You're like, yeah. Oh. yeah, all right, let's go. Uh, <laughs> guys, uh, I know, um, you know, the this whole uh, yeah. uh, Emperor thing is really important, but uh, Zori and I are going to go, um, you know, we're going to try to make oh, things work wow. and we got to go do stuff. So, uh, you know, here are the keys. <laughs> BB-8 is going to stay with you. Yeah. Your um, Poe is much more gallant than mine. My Poe would have just been like, let's go. We'll t- take OG's ship and just get out of here. <laughs> no, nah, he would have had to, you know, he would have, for Finn, he would have oh, been like. Oh, Finn had the keys. That's what he would have been like, look, dude. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I um, it, it, it is an awful lot of unnecessary stuff. Like, I, I feel like, you know, I get that they wanted to make Zori seem like a character and not just. Um, not just you know somebody for them to kind of not like an NPC. They wanted to give her kind of more yeah. of a more of a backstory well, and being like, um, um, and I, I, I it's interesting that um you get to see a little bit of pose. You know when he's looking at they're they're sitting on the rooftop, kind of watching the the walkers to kind of destroy the town. And he's like, how long has it been like this? Like you can tell that what he walked away from wasn't quite as harsh 
as how it is now. Like it's gotten a lot worse. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I think the, um, you know, so it makes him a little bit like, well, he didn't just walk away from this, you know, when, when things were as bad as they are now, but it, it was a lot more subtle. You know, they were kind of cracking down a little bit, but they weren't like driving tanks through the street. Or big when he left yeah, the first time. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's really bad there now. Obviously, like yeah. they were, we we saw migraines. them walking on the migraines street for like soon. yeah migraines. We saw them walking on the street for like a like not a minute like ten seconds earlier, and we saw like four houses being raided in that span of time. It yeah. was it was insane. Um, speaking of seeing a little bit about her, um, we get, we see a little bit of her face as well, mm-hmm. um, which was kind of surprising because they actually put. Um, what's her name? Carrie, Carrie Russell. That is. Mm-hmm. They actually put her in that costume. Which, when you see that character, that's that seems like your your traditional Star Wars. It's a person in a suit. Don't worry about it. Action right. figure character. But they're like, no, we're going to open up her mask, and it's really going to be her. I wonder if she was there in it for all the scenes, or if it was just this one <laughs> scene. I don't know. I was wondering if they put it in digitally. Oh, you know what I mean? Because cool. that's why they. Because like otherwise, why not have her take the helmet completely off? Yeah, I was. She should have had a boosh moment of like taking off the helmet. And, yeah, and having you know, like having her voice turn to normal, and she, she, you know. I'll tell you and why I think woman. it's real. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh, God, how often is that going to happen? <laughs> no, I, the reason I think it's real is because there's like a stray hair, mm. like sticking out of the helmet when it opens. Um, and it's kind of distracting and I feel like yeah. they wouldn't have added that in digitally, but maybe that's the ultimate <laughs> trick. They make yeah. it look distractingly weird <laughs> so that you go, it has to be real. You don't notice mm. the other parts that aren't quite right. You're just <laughs> so it's distracted like, on the, the it's, air. It's real, but it's digitally inserted. So maybe they had her just like, all right, lean your eyes up against this thing and then talking to the microphone. And so like in the studio, she was just kind of like looking through like a, like a peephole, you know, a, a, what's that? <laughs> The little mailbox slot kind yeah, of the, yeah, you know, yeah. a speakeasy has. Yeah. Like, look through one of those and then talking to the microphone and then they just yeah. kind of motion captured that and pasted it onto <laughs> the face of the body double. Um, I This could be controversial, but uh, seeing a lady in a helmet in this movie it reminded me of our old friends, the Mandalorians, who we just saw a lot of in the um, movie, the TV Television series program. of the same name. Um, mm-hmm. I guess one thing that kind of irks me about this um is is i feel like since this is the last of the star war of the skywalker saga i feel like and there's so much rich history in that that like the fact that they're not taking a character from the past and having this be uh, like someone we have more of a relationship with or like oh i always wonder what happened to you know x or whatever and i I know it's tough because i complain about the fan service and all that stuff but um, I mean, I guess it goes yeah. kind of like back to what you were saying, Pete, though. It almost feels like it should be two movies. It should be part three of the sequels and then the finale then the, of the, of the star Wars saga. Yeah. Where it's episode 10 wrapping up everything together. Yeah. And oh. that's where you pack in. Cause I mean, this almost could have been so, like so, end game or that where you have like, this is, they're throwing everything into this, you know, and it's, mm-hmm. it's kind of skimpy in that regard, like in terms of capitalizing on the universe. Would episode nine in that version end with them with the reveal of Palpatine? Like you wouldn't get him until the end of that. Yeah, I think. I so. think that I like that better. I mean, I hmm. the, listen. I I'm I'm sorry. The reason the, the the reason I don't like this one as much as I wanted to, um, is that the, the Palpatine thing is a, a big part of it. It's just it just it just comes from absolutely nowhere to me. Like a hundred percent comes nowhere. from Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> but Exegol comes from nowhere. Like the fact that the opening crawl starts with Palpatine's back, and it's like that wasn't remotely hinted at in any of the two previous two films. Like not even a tiny bit. Um, and like I, I don't know. I can't compare that to the third part of either of the first two series. Like there's nothing. There's no left turn like that in uh, that I can remember in either of those where it's like, w- wait, what? Uh, it, it just comes from so out of nowhere, and I. Plus, I really like Last Jedi. I really like the things that it did to be counterintuitive. And the fact that this undoes a bunch of them, most notably the Rey's parentage, that her parents were nobody, it really mm-hmm. bums me out. Like, I really liked that. And so to then go, nah, she, it was Palpatine. I'm like, oh. Saeek. <laughs> oh. 
And I think because I think we talked about this before, but like probably before this movie came out, because that was one of, one of the part of the reason I liked that was I was baffled when everyone was so mystified by her parents in The Force Awakens. When The Force Awakens came out and everybody was going, the two big mysteries that they all were obsessed with, those who are Ray, who are Ray's parents and who is um, uh, Snoke. And both of those were things where I was going, what? Who are Ray's parents? They're the people she has to get over in order to become a hero. That's all that matters. Like that's who cares who they are. They're John and and Jane Schmuck. Like who cares? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Space dough. The point is they're not coming back, and she needs to move on. And then the same with Snoke. People going, "Who's Snoke really?" And I'm like, "He's Snoke. What do you? Mean? What do you? Why does he? Anybody? I don't understand." I think everybody was so kind of like you know uh, uh, by by the Star Wars kind of machine you know it's like well they're they're kind of accustomed they're, they're uh what's the word i'm looking for they've they've kind of become conditioned uh, sus- uh they expect that like all right new character who's big important they must be related to somebody here especially they a powerful did that. force user yeah they already did that with um yeah but that's what i mean kylo that's that's why it's everybody but the kylo wasn't wasn't like a reveal it was just kind of like within the first half hour of you meeting him they're like yes Han Solo's son this guy and sometimes I watch son, that guy. that movie what some of the times because again I love Force Awakens Force Awakens is probably still my second favorite like I, I adore it so it's not a I hate J.J. Abrams thing about mm-hmm. not liking this movie I just mm-hmm. I just don't like the way it went um, but uh, sometimes when I watch The Force Awakens I, I will kind of watch it and go like I, I, I think there must have been a version of this where they kept it secret they must have been a version yeah. of this where you don't find out that he's his son until he says, I'm looking at my son. Yeah. Right. Uh, and I was trying to imagine how that would play out and how different that would be and him not taking the mask off until then, for example, and stuff like that. And I'm like, it, I'm, they must have filmed that and then decided uh, people will guess it too quickly or something like that. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that that's, you know. For the reasons why you don't like this, I do like this. And then it's like, <laughs> it, it is a, it is a kind of out of nowhere thing and I'm, I'm I was so relieved when they at the beginning they're just kind of like yeah Palpatine's back like no no explanation he does like oh thank god like um because we already knew he was coming back after you know we had seen it at celebration and all that so I think in the meta sense there was like oh we already know that Palpatine's back thank you, you god heard it's him not on like Fortnite. A, yeah thank god it's not a <laughs> you know 90 minute quest to 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 find him and then you know a half hour of fighting him it, that's not what I wanted from this at all, which is almost what I expected it to be. And then when, once it was like, no, he's back, I was like, oh, okay, good. And then in a sense, it does turn into a ninety-minute quest to find him and then a half hour of fighting him, but <laughs> in a in a different way that he was already. It's not like a mystery. Yeah, I mean, you're uh, right. You're right in the sense that I agree with everything you just said, except that I wish <laughs> they hadn't revealed that he was back in celebration because he wasn't back. <laughs> Right. Like, I just, like, I just, I just find it. And again, also the the whole thing of like Ray not being related to everybody else means it's back to being, she's, she, she's just a a person. Anybody, it could be anyone. And then it's like, no, it's not. Once again, I'm not a hundred percent convinced that, because that Ray is related to Palpatine or Palpatine clones, because we hear that from villains who have lied before and not everybody, you know, not everything that everybody says has to be taken a hundred percent true. Uh, George Lucas himself said, well, I don't know, but midichlorians are just something that some people believe in, which yeah. is, you know, same deal here. It's just like, Oh, just because one character said it doesn't mean up. Oh, this is true. This is absolutely, we put that straight into the Wikipedia as gospel, but like, it would be pretty ha- hard to, I mean, we get a flashback and I, and we don't get a lot of flashbacks in star Wars, do we? Mm. Um, but we get one. Which, which suge- I don't know, suggests truth to me. In, you know, we'll to keep it, our eyes open when we watch it to see right. how, yeah. how, how much room, wiggle room there is there. To I mean, and, again, in the previous film, we had multiple flash, flashbacks showing different points of view. So there you are. Yeah. yeah. Like, think about who the flashbacks are coming from and what, you know, the, all the information is coming from, well, either Snoke or the Emperor via Kylo Ren, basically, about any of this stuff. Yeah. And so... um. I, I think it needs to be taken with at least a grain of uh, what's that stuff on that covers the surface of crate. Also, yeah, sure. I hate to say it, Pete, but I think inevitably they're going to come out with a novel or something, which is going to make it concrete. Oh, you know what oh I mean? yeah. yeah. They'll eventually, oh. yeah, sure, but that's you mean not... the stuff that covers the surface of crate, but it's going to be concrete. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> Perfect. Okay. Um, I, I definitely remember, again, wh- liking this movie more this time. Uh, and I also remember this time watching it going, oh, it actually did do a lot more with The the Last Jedi than I thought it did. Like, I remembered it being like it throws away so much of what The Last Jedi set up. Mm-hmm. And it does throw away a number of things. But it does also play off a bunch of... Uh, the stuff that I loved every single time in this movie was the all the Raylo stuff. I love all the Raylo stuff in, in, mm-hmm. in this whole film. And that comes, comes straight from Last Jedi, obviously. Um, but like it comes even down to like they broke the lightsaber in the previous film and I was like oh man what's gonna happen nothing it's fine <laughs> well, <laughs> she fixed it don't psych. worry about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> she fixed it because that's part of her Jedi training and they go into that a to little bit in the novelization own. don't fix an old one but that oh, should have all been in the opening make, crawl before she could make one she had to le- she learned how to fix that one granted where did the parts come from that I don't know I, it's not the, <laughs> I haven't gotten to that part in the novelization yet I don't think because like it was pretty oh, much like be... those parts exploded all over that room and then that room got bisected by a <laughs> ship so um, but I actually, here's the thing. So, so, so that, that lightsaber being there, right. Is because, you know, people were like, oh, where did the lightsaber go when it got chopped off of Luke's, uh, Luke's hand? Uh, and, and that's a big mystery. Right. But I, I realized in, in watching this now, now the mystery is where's his green lightsaber. Right. Doesn't he have it? We in- saw that he, well, he, he had it in the flashbacks. Right. In in the last movie, when he when he doesn't kill Kylo Ren, but th- he doesn't have it, or if if he has it on um, uh, Octo, he doesn't ever to take mm, it out. That's and true. Show it. We have to ask Steel; he would know where the <laughs> where that green lightsaber is. Um, the opening there, crawl there, should have just been somehow Palpatine has returned. You know, Pal- the dead speak. Palpatine has returned. Ray has re- fixed up the lightsaber. Kylo Ren fixed up his helmet. All the you know just. All the things that got and just have them all rolled back in the in the in the crawl that way you just right. get them out and guilty, guilty pulling a band aid off yeah, right yeah just nail it so. Patrick um, Duffy is in the shower um, <laughs> Palpatine's doing doing his own little pump up the volume for some reason I don't I don't know like what is the reason behind his pirate radio broadcasts really just to talk, make everybody a little scared <laughs> talk hard steal the air <laughs> um, let's talk more but, rock. Well, along those same lines, before we get away from it, there isn't there is a mystery that possibly about um, Darth Vader's lightsaber is in this room. There's a missed opportunity here. You get they go to the room, they go to find the wayfinder in the basically the you know the throne room that they were that they had the duel in, and Darth Vader's lightsaber gets cut off his arm before that whole thing explodes. So it should be in that room somewhere, and they went to that room, yeah. and that seems like a whole different like oh well that would be a cool thing like kylo ren would want that like you might want Valuable that collector's like, everybody yeah. i know i will also say having just rewatched return of the jedi when they put it out in theaters mm-hmm. uh there's no way chunks that big survived that that start <laughs> like with the, it blows up good it blows yeah. up it was on good. the far side of the explosion it was like you couldn't it wasn't see it, cause... <laughs> it w- it's literally the big dish they show <laughs> It's the part you always see, unless there's secretly two dishes and we yeah. never know. Are you so you mm-hmm. suggesting there's some kind of conspiracy afoot here that this was a controlled? <laughs> mm-hmm. uh... Well, maybe they what? had an escape pod kind of a thing where they hit oh, a button yeah. and that that whole spire launches off. Separate the saucer <laughs> section. Mm-hmm. There you go. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, I. That's right. I always get confused because in my mind, as a child, not understanding at all how the Death Star worked, I always put Palpatine's um, throne room in the dish in some capacity in the center but no yeah. that, I, then i never made the connection that when you see that little tower that's where he actually is meant to be i, I just made that connection like i think you're right. the past couple of years that that was yeah. that that you see the little spire tower there and that's supposed to be where his throne room is yeah well uh, me too my maybe last... they just added that in in the recent uh, dlc of, of mm. the reality there mm. we go <laughs> my last note um is that they should have had uh zori bliss take her helmet off and it would be uh pedro pascal under oh the, uh, there you go perfect <laughs> oh so, sorry while we were talking i did look it up uh according to jj abrams that's her in there um it said that she loved her helmet so much that the first two days of shooting she never took it off at all mm-hmm. for the entire day she of couldn't shooting. take it off <laughs> 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 Or she like it's like JJ, I love this so much. I'm not going to take it off for the next three days, okay? Okay. And then she sent her her double in there, and she went to you know Catalina Island or whatever. 
Got some got some cocktails on the beach. <laughs> to my Perfect. knowledge, she was in that helmet. That's uh, <laughs> legally uh, that's all I can admit. So, <laughs> well, uh, on that note, uh, remember we have uh, we have to answer the the uh, pose pose blank that he left hanging. We got to uh, do that for tomorrow. Jordan, can you come back tomorrow to uh, to fill in the blank? Well, I have to now. I'm going to well, write yeah, something put, down on a piece of paper. Put you in a spot there. Um, speaking of putting. Uh, Putting, you know, putting you in a spot, putting something on paper. I was going to try to somehow turn this into a... Uh, the merch, mailbox. But... Mailbox. That's paper. The mailbox. There you go. Um, so uh, if, if speaking of, uh, of writing stuff down, write stuff down, send it to us. We hardly ever mention it, but we still have a P.O. box. That's oh. uh, Star Wars Minute, uh, P.O. Box 20139, Greedo Square Station, New York, New York. Uh, 10001. Destruct. What? No, no, don't say destruct. <laughs> but uh, a while ago, it, it's actually Greeley Square Station, named after Horace Greeley, but we figured out if you write Greedo Square Station, they still send it there. Nice. Um, so uh, send it there. Adam will check it. He'll forward me the pertinent stuff. Uh, we love getting mail. We love getting snacks. Sometimes it takes a few months, so don't send anything perishable. <laughs> but um, pie. do it. Do it. Send us mail. <laughs> And uh, we will meet you back here tomorrow on a brand new Star Wars Star Minute. Wars Star Minute. Wars Minute.